It's cold and dry. Liverpool temperature 43 degrees at 8 o'clock. Moira Edmund to the Radio City News. The search for the survivors of the North Sea oil rig disaster has been called off, with Wirral man Alan Beggs finally being listed among those dead, presumed drowned. It had been hoped that Mr Beggs might have left the rig just before it capsized, but there's been no word from him, and last night his name was added to the list of 124 dead. But now the sea search is over, a new search is underway to find out what caused the accident. In Britain, the Department of Energy says that in the heavy gales, a crew boat may have collided with one of the pylons supporting the rig. And in Norway, a government inquiry will start today, as Malcolm Brabant reports. The four-man government commission investigating the disaster will have their first chance to see what caused the accident later today. They'll be looking at the severed leg of the floatel, which sheared from the structure, throwing it off balance just before the accident. It's been suggested that cracks were found in the leg a month ago by divers, but this has been denied by the platform's owners, who say if there had been any faults, immediate action would have been taken. As yet it's not clear what will happen to the Alexander Keeland, which is acting as a submerged tomb for 83 men. It may have to be towed ashore before the bodies can be recovered, as it's too dangerous for divers to go inside. But if the authorities decide to try to bring the floatel back to the surface the right way up, they could lose some of the bodies forever. Malcolm Brabant, IRN, Stavanger. Mountain rescue teams and an RAF helicopter have begun a full-scale search for two skiers missing in the Cairngorms. The skiers, a man and a woman, both teachers from the Newcastle area, failed to return yesterday from an afternoon's expedition. John Conte's bid to regain the world light heavyweight boxing title ended in the fourth round of his fight in Atlantic City, New Jersey, last night. The referee stopped the fight after champion Matthew Saad Mohammed had floored him five times. Afterwards, Conte spoke about the punches that stopped him. Yeah, I think you can see them coming. It's just that uh, sort of had a sort of uh, catches up here, you know, it doesn't get you for the split second. I was on the next thing I knew was on the ground. No, it's just that when I I was feeling okay, I thought it was warming into the fight. Yeah, you boxed but, uh, well at that. And then uh, I thought it was just warming up, and then I got caught with the uh, punches the right hand. I think it was. Officials in Washington have now admitted the Carter administration has been in touch with the Iranian government, suggesting that a commission be set up to investigate past American policy towards Iran. The admission follows Ayatollah Khomeini's publication of a letter from President Carter, which the Americans originally said was a hoax. The Steele inquiry resumes in London this morning. All the evidence from the management and unions has now been presented and today has been set aside for cross-examination by the three-man inquiry team. Peter Dealey reports. The Lever inquiry got off to a cracking pace yesterday. Both sides gave their evidence well before the appointed time. The union saying, pay us the 19%, it's fair and just, and only keep workers in line with inflation. Management saying, your strike's taken out 10% of our market share, we just don't have the money. There's been an energy crisis, in case you didn't know it. We've got competition at home and abroad, and we're overmanned. Today, the three-man panel, Lord Lever, Sir Richard Marsh and Bill Keyes, will question both sides and try and find some common ground, if any. It's sort of verdict could come as early as Tuesday, barring no major hitches. Peter Dealey, IRN. Six people have been taken to hospital in County Durham after an explosion which ripped the front off a house in Stanley. Police say the rest of the house will have to be demolished. Among the injured were an 84-year-old woman and a 54-year-old man who have been detained in hospital. Gas, electricity and local council officials are trying to discover the cause of the blast. More than 100,000 people are expected to turn out on either side of the River Mersey this morning to welcome a financial flop into Liverpool. For the second time in seven months, an Air France Concorde will touch down at Liverpool Airport. It'll then make a supersonic 78-minute trip to Paris with 100 passengers on board. Paul Rowley reports. Air France announced l'arrivée de la Concorde. Financial flop, maybe, but audience grab us certainly when Concorde flying twice the speed of sound touches down at Speak. Already vantage points at Frodsham Hill and Eastern Ferry are being reserved for sightseers hoping to get a glimpse of the supersonic craft. Last August, 120,000 people turned out on Concorde's first visit to Liverpool. An ambitious project that's led to the best piece of publicity the airport's ever likely to get. The man first approach was Air France Chief Bob Murphy. We had a moment's hesitation when we thought uh, was Liverpool Airport in fact uh, capable of taking the Concorde because obviously r runway strength and runway length and servicing capabilities are of the utmost importance but our operational people got in touch with Liverpool Airport 
and found, from those points of view, that Liverpool was in fact perfectly adequate to, to take Concorde. Since the August arrival, four other airports have taken Concorde, giving 2,000 people the chance to fly supersonically. Paul Rowley, Radio City News. Well, that's all for now on Explorations at 9. This is Moira Redmond with Radio City News. Radio City, first with news, first with music. Now.